It's been three whole years since I last covered Behaptics on this channel. But here we are with the TaxSuit Pro. Some things have changed, others, well, let's just say the experience has gotten much more polished. Before we jump in, quick heads up, I've got timestamps in the description so you can skip straight to your platform of choice, whether that's PC VR, PSVR 2, Quest, or Flat. Also, if you're thinking about picking one up, I've got an affiliate link down there for a whopping 3% off. I know, I know, try not to spend it all in one place. The TaxSuit Pro ships with everything you need to get started. Inside the box, you'll find the vest itself, a USB-C charging cable, the Bluetooth dongle for PC use, and both a 3.5 millimeter aux cable and Y splitter adapter for wired audio to haptics. B Haptics has been in the haptic feedback game for a while now, making various devices from full vests to arm sleeves and even face haptics. The TaxSuit Pro sits at their current flagship vest, replacing the older X40 and X16 models that launched around 2020 for 499 and 330 respectively. Those older models aren't even sold anymore, which tells you something about how quickly this space moves. I still have my X40, so let me break down some differences. The most obvious change is that front controller wheel. Finally, you can adjust haptic intensity without taking the vest off or fumbling through an app. The X40 made you guess if everything was connected properly unless you wanted to strip down and check the back panel. Motor count dropped from 40 to 32, but before you panic, B Haptics claims that they've optimized placement and control to maintain the same feedback quality. I can't say I notice a dramatic difference in most games, though your mileage may vary depending on how sensitive you are to these sorts of things. Aesthetically, I'll be honest, I preferred the X40's look. The fabric front panel felt more premium than whatever material they're using on the Pro, which attracts fingerprints like crazy. You also can't slap custom patches on this one like the X40, though the center logo on the dial does pop off via magnets, I think, if you want to get creative. Game developers need to add the Behaptics SDK for the best experience. The supported games list is divided into categories based on platform. Quest, Steam VR, PSVR 2, Sim Racing, PC games, and Rift. However, if you're dedicated enough, you can also make profiles for your favorite games using the Behaptics Designer software. Some games are tagged as mod and those are user generated. That means that there might be a couple of extra steps needed to get it working. Mods are available for PC only, and I'll show you an example of how to get one of the modded games working in the PC VR setup section. All flat PC games on the supported list are mods, not native implementations. The Steam VR list has a mix of mods and native integrations, so your experience will vary depending on what you're playing. Setting up with Quest is probably the smoothest experience between all the different platforms. Power on the vest by holding that front button, then head to Quick Settings, Bluetooth, and Scan for Devices. Once paired, you'll get a confirmation rumble and solid blue LED. The B Haptics Player Quest app itself is pretty useful, but not necessary to use the vest unless you want to do things like stream the feedback to the PC software or test some things on the vest. You can adjust haptic intensity, test individual motors, and even try their Haptic Worlds demo where you can essentially shoot yourself with different weapons to feel the feedback. Weird? Absolutely. Effective for testing? You bet. There's also an option to enable VR Chat OSC so you can get haptics in VR Chat on Quest. If you want me to show you that setup, let me know in the comments and I'll make it a separate video. There is a snag occasionally, and this seems to be a meta Bluetooth thing, not be haptics. If you turn off your Quest or the Quest or the vest goes to sleep or turns off, it won't automatically reconnect. You'll need to unpair and repair the vest. It's annoying, but at least the pairing process is quick. I tested with Zombie Army VR and Shock Troops, both worked whenever I launched them through the Behaptics app or directly from the Quest library, which is good news for workflow. Zombie Army VR only seemed to have haptics for guns and equipment, not when getting hit by zombies, unfortunately. But each developer integrates the SDK differently, and I still had a good time getting to feel the gun haptics. PSVR 2 setup requires their mobile app, which immediately forces you to create an account. Not my favorite approach, but whatever. The app walks you through Bluetooth pairing, then you need to make sure your phone and PS5 are on the same Wi-Fi network. Once connected, you get a three minute window to launch your supported game after hitting the big start button in the app. Some games like Synth Riders require you to enable Behaptic support in their settings menu, so don't forget that step. The mobile app has the same features as the Quest version, intensity adjustment, motor testing, haptic previews. It also includes audio to haptics functionality, though I'll cover that separately since it applies to all platforms. Fair warning though, PSVR 2 has the smallest library of supported games. If this is your primary platform, definitely check the compatibility list before buying. 
To get the vest working on PC, download the B Haptics Player software, plug in the included dongle, power on the vest, and click pair when it appears. The setup process is straightforward, and the dedicated dongle worked reliably for me most of the time. Then simply launch your supported game, and you're all set. The PC app is the most feature-rich version. You can browse supported games, customize haptic profiles, use audio to haptics either wired or wireless, check battery levels, adjust LED colors and brightness, and access the visualizer for streaming or content creation. Most modded games use different frameworks depending on the title. Some use Melon Loader, other use Belpinex or other mod loaders. The key is reading the specific instructions for each game. I tried Drunken Bar Fight using Melon Loader. After installing Melon Loader, downloading the mod from Nexus Mods, and following the guide, it didn't seem to work for me. And I'm impatient, so I gave up pretty quickly. After the fall worked much better, their automated installer downloads everything you need, though Windows Defender will complain about the unknown publisher. Once it's running, you get a startup heartbeat to confirm the mod's active. For flat PC games, I attempted GTFO and Fallout 4, but found the instructions either outdated or poorly documented. Your patience for mod troubleshooting will determine how much value you get from the PC flat library. This is probably the feature that makes the vest worth considering, even if your games aren't natively supported. Audio to Haptics converts any audio signal into haptic feedback in real time, whether you're gaming, listening to music, or watching movies. There are two ways to set this up, wireless for PC users and wired for everyone else. Wireless setup simple if you're already connected via Bluetooth. Just toggle audio to haptics on the bottom left corner of the PC app. By default, both wired and wireless audio to haptics will trigger haptics for everything until you select a profile. That's where the magic happens. B Haptics includes some default profiles like pop bass for music with heavy low end and FBS for gunfire and explosions, but what you'll really want are the user generated profiles customized for specific movies, games, and genres. I tested the Helldivers profile and was genuinely impressed. It picked up on the things that mattered, explosions, hits, gunfire, while mostly ignoring voice chat and background music. The community created profiles can be surprisingly sophisticated. Wired setup works with any device that has a 3.5 millimeter jack, console, Quest 3, PC, whatever. Use the included Y splitter, vest plugs into one side, your headphones into the other, and the main cable goes into your audio source. Note that the Quest 3S doesn't have an audio jack, so you might be SOL. You can switch between profiles using the vest dial by holding the power button and rotating the wheel. Super convenient when you want to adjust on the fly. If you want to create your own audio to haptics profiles, you can use the B Haptics Studio software. For full haptic pattern creation, there's B Haptics Designer, which lets you build custom haptic experiences from scratch. I won't go deep into either of these since they're pretty specialized, but they do exist if you want to really get into customization. The visualizer feedback is genuinely useful for showing viewers what's happening with the haptic feedback. For Quest users, you can actually stream the haptic data to the PC visualizer, which is pretty clever, but requires a very specific setup process. In general, though, you can add it as a transparent layer in OBS by adding a new source, then window capture, name it something like B Haptics. Make sure the target is the B Haptics overlay window. Switch the capture method over to Windows 10. Move it where you want in your scene and press the arrow on the menu top right to hide the menu. If the arrow annoys you like it does me, with the B Haptics overlay source selected, hold Alt and crop down just past that arrow. Here's how to get Quest Haptics showing on your PC software visualizer. And know that this process is a bit finicky. First, connect the vest via Bluetooth to your Quest first. Then launch the B Haptics Quest app and toggle the streaming tab. Now launch the B Haptics Player PC software and put the dongle back into your PC. Back in the Quest app, find your IP address and connect to it. Launch your B Haptics compatible VR game on Quest. Open the visualizer on the PC software. And once the vest is hooked into the game, it'll now match up with your Quest haptic feedback. For PSVR 2, the visualizer backdrop can be changed to different colors, like chroma key green, which is nice, but the annoying part is syncing the visualizer to your game and real world footage in post. What I had to do was hold up my phone and force some haptic feedback to happen so that I had a starting point to line up all my tracks with the feedback. Not ideal and pretty tedious work, but doable. 
At 4.1 pounds, the vest isn't particularly heavy, but you'll definitely know you're wearing it. The sleeveless design helps with heat buildup, but I definitely still got sweaty in it during summer test sessions. The back haptics make it slightly lumpy when leaning against a chair, but it's not uncomfortable enough to be a deal breaker. The adjustable shoulder straps and optional extension straps sold separately help fit across different body types. The included size range covers 26 to 50 inches, expandable to 58 inches with the extensions. Battery life is really solid at 13.5 hours of typical use. The USB-C charging is convenient and the LED indicator clearly shows charging states. Just remember you can't use the vest while it's charging. The haptics themselves feel good and satisfying when they trigger. There's a real sense of impact that's hard to describe until you feel it. The TechSuit Pro is simultaneously the best haptic vest that B-Haptics has made so far and is still somewhat a niche product. The hardware improvements over the X40 are meaningful enough. This front dial alone and the improvements to the dongle make it worth considering if you have an older model. Audio to haptics really has improved from before, even if it's not as refined as a native SDK integration. When it works properly, the immersion boost is noticeable, especially in action games and movies. If you can save up the money, this is one of the few third-party, totally extra accessories that I recommend you splurge a little on. But I would definitely check the supported games list first to make sure that the games that you really want to play are on it. That being said, also give the audio to haptics profiles a skim and see if anyone's made profiles for games that maybe don't have a native integration or mod support. Or maybe try your hand at building your own profiles. At $499, it's definitely not an impulse purchase and game support is still limited, especially on PSVR 2. But if you're deeply into VR and want to experiment with haptic feedback, the TaxSuit Pro delivers on its promise. And there you have it. My take on the TaxSuit Pro after extensive testing across multiple platforms. Let me know in the comments if you want to see anything specific like that VR chat OSC setup. Don't forget that affiliate link in the description for 3% off if you decide you end up wanting one for yourself. It is an affiliate link, of course, duh, and every little bit helps this channel. As always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you in the next one.